Hello! Welcome to Duncan Egg Bricks and to part 57 of my Hogwarts mock series. We're really getting through the castle now. In fact, we are not really building part of the castle today as that's mostly finished. We're in fact going to be building the wooden bridge. I have to say it's actually quite a relief to be building in a colour that isn't tan. In fact, I don't think there is a single tan brick in this entire tub just here. It's predominantly reddish brown uh, with a few other little bits and pieces scattered around. Now, uh, when I was setting about designing the wooden bridge, I really wanted to do it justice. It's an iconic part of the castle, even though it only appears from Prisoner of Azkaban onwards and then famously gets destroyed in Deathly Hallows Part 2. Um, it's actually quite cool because uh, you can actually walk on the bridge, or at least the part of it they built. It's at the Harry Potter studio tour, and they just used that for filming and then either digitally extended it or used the miniature, which is still in existence again at the studios. Now, in uh, real life, looking at the bridge as it is, uh, sort of in its outdoor backlot location, it's not really reddish brown. Um, that's not really the best match in terms of colour. What I would say the best matches is probably a mixture between uh, dark tan, medium nougat, and possibly some colours that Lego doesn't really have. However, I've decided to go with reddish brown, partly for availability of parts. Reddish brown is a much more common colour, and you get a lot of different parts in that colour. And uh, also because I did try out some of the other colours, and they didn't quite work. I think for my display, especially as my main castle isn't technically the right colour, um, weirdly also, that would probably look better in dark tan. Um, so that would kind of merge the colours together. Whereas on my version, I'm going for a little bit more variation. We've got tan as the main colour and then reddish brown as the main colour of the bridge, sorry tan as the main colour of the castle I should say. So here are all the parts that I've collected, you might recognise some of them including these big support pieces which uh, came in the um, original Hogwarts Express, I say original, the most recent play scale Hogwarts Express set, not the monstrosity that is the most recent icons version and another part that i uh, was really wanting to use was this fence piece here um which has only fairly recently come in reddish brown in fact i think it came in uh, one of the hogwarts moment sets i did initially want to use this as the uh, kind of wooden tracery around the windows as it's almost perfectly the top of the window with these kind of curly patterns and then if I could get some sort of verticals in here and here, then I thought it would work well. Unfortunately, all my plans for something like that ended up at much too big a scale that was going to take up far too much space, uh, especially in height. So I've had to vastly reduce the scale, uh, which in a similar way to my hospital wing bridge means that it's a little bit tricky to put figures inside. Although this is more open and I definitely can put figures inside. The windows are actually just going to be these one by two by three uh, window frames in reddish brown but without the glass inside them. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to build the whole thing, I think, um, although I may show you different bits of the structure as I go, and then at the end, I'm going to put the question to you, I'll put it to you now as well, should I swap out some of the colours? I've got quite a lot of these windows in dark brown, and a lot of the other pieces do come in dark brown as well, so it's definitely something I could do. Let me know if you think that would be nice, if you think that would be uh, a good little bit of variation and weathering, and uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do in future. Right, it's a little bit unusual because we're not starting with one big base plate. We're actually starting with something made up of a few different plates. I think I'll build the bridge deck first and then the structure of the bridge and its roof. And then we'll go ahead and add the supports afterwards. So let's get on with it. I thought I'd just show you the basic size of the wooden bridge before I went ahead and put too many details on it. Here is the width, it is only four studs wide, so again it's the same as the hospital wing bridge, and that kind of makes sense because they're all put in uh, one kind of line through from one side of the clock tower to the other. The main structure just has a lot of uh, reddish brown bricks and plates, I have used these modified bricks here with the groove in them just to add a little bit of detail. The windows are then going to go in here, and uh, this side is actually going to be completely open, so this is the side that actually faces away from the viewer when you're looking from the uh, kind of normal viewing side. Uh, the reason I've left it open is otherwise it would only be two studs wide inside, and uh, this just basically means that I can pose some figures inside and uh, have them be seen through the windows, but also see them from the back, so I'll definitely set up some scenes there. Right, now that that is put together, I think it just makes sense if I go ahead, build everything up to the roof, and then I'll just show you how I'm going to go about creating the roof. 
The main bridge structure is taking shape right now. Uh, it does look a little bit like a uh, train carriage, but uh, it will have some more details on it in future. You can see those windows are lined up there just in groups of four. Get a fairly nice view looking down the middle, obviously missing one side, but we'll just have to pretend that that's there. We've also used these inverted slopes to kind of show half an arch on the uh, on the inside there. Ward's using those uh, more curved arch piece, uh, pieces that come to a point when you put two of them together, uh, but I uh, decided that these looked a little bit better overall. There's also some uh, stacks of plates just to get things at exactly the right height. It's still a little bit flimsy, so what I think it needs is a roof. And for that, I'm going to be using a whole bunch of these two by two by two slopes and in fact some one by two by two slopes um, and then some cheese slopes along the front here using these bricks with studs on the side just to add that little kind of flare at the bottom um, which the actual bridge does have and in fact the one piece I was waiting for was just one of these pieces and um, they accidentally sent a uh, three tall version instead of a two tall very kindly sent that out today uh, or sent it out yesterday rather it arrived on the day that I'm filming so I can go ahead and build it right let's build a roof now that is looking more recognizably like the uh, wooden bridge pretty happy with how that's turned out obviously got those slopes there and then the cheese slopes at the bottom some of them are just attached by a single stud but that's uh, more than enough and they're kept relatively straight although to be honest doesn't really matter if they're a little bit wonky because the entire bridge is wonky uh, that's one thing i did struggle with in the design obviously i want to create something that's solid that's going to stand up by itself but this bridge in the films is uh, you know wonky and misshapen like a lot of old houses are and uh, i ultimately decided i was going to make it uh, you know kind of regular and solid and then in the future look at um, you know shaking things up a bit i just wanted to get the basic concept across just look inside we can also see where I've actually gone ahead and used these designs because I didn't want to do a roof on the other side as well and I wanted something more interesting than just bricks to put on the inside so ordered a few extra of those and I think it's a nice little nod to those kind of details that I did want to use for the windows but really are too big because these are two bricks tall as it is and the windows are only three bricks tall any taller and it uh, really just doesn't fit. I've used a whole bunch of jumpers on the top and then some single uh, one wide tiles down the middle small um, little turret top on the middle um, yeah I think it's looking pretty good but obviously this doesn't just sit on the ground this is going to need some supports to raise it up and unlike a lot of the other parts of my castle I'm actually building this all as one piece so it'll include the top or the ground floor or first floor if you're in the US um, and also it supports underneath it'll be all one thing only reason being because it's uh, hollow underneath you'll see all the way through and um, there's nowhere to actually put anything underneath so I thought I might as well get it all sorted all in one piece so we will need this bag here with these big supports along with this bag full of bar pieces and I've come up with quite a nice pattern to replicate these X's here and uh, make a nice compressed version of the wooden bridge so I'm going to go ahead build those two supports and then we can try and combine everything so just going through building the supports now, I thought I'd just point out uh, how sometimes building in real bricks can be quite different to building digitally. I've used these supports here, which uh, when you look at the top, they have four studs and then Technic holes or Technic axles rather, sorry, and it's the same at the bottom. And uh, so when I was building, I thought in order to keep it a little bit more secure, I'll use four studs in the middle and then these modified round tiles with bars. And sure enough, all fits together perfectly. This is just the support for one side. Uh, but what I failed to take into account is that actually these holes here, before you get to the Technic Axle, they do actually accept studs. So uh, yeah, I could have just gone with one by six plates and it would have been absolutely fine. But you know what? I think I'm going to leave it as is um, just because they do match the profile of these supports here and they do keep them in place. So you know what? It doesn't always work out how you planned it when you're doing things digitally. That's why sometimes even if you don't have the right coloured bricks, and I know I do this, I will go ahead and I'll basically create these uh, kind of mock-ups to make sure that everything works. Case in point, I said I was going to have a way of making these X structures. What I've actually done is use a bunch of brown bar parts. These are three long bars, this kind of uh, slightly odd lightsaber hilt is the way I think of it, and then these clips. And uh, these clip on here, and then they get tilted up like that, so you can see the X pattern matches. And they also, with a little bit of wiggling and no stress on the parts, will actually connect to another piece with a bar connection, which will be on the underside of the bridge. So they'll actually be kept nice and secure. And I just made a little mock-up with everything in the uh, right kind of um, sizes, so everything was the right distance apart, to check that it works. Of course, 
now that I've said that, <laughs> it's probably not going to work in person uh, on in the real bricks, I should say. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I've made up quite a few of these. Going to get the support done, get the other side done, and then get everything connected. There we go. That looks like a finished bridge to me. Did have a little bit of trouble after making a joke about it, actually getting these struts in place. Um, so it's two, three long bars and then they're connected in the middle. It's not quite long enough to actually fit into both of these uh, bar clip connectors. So uh, the connection is a little bit loose, but I think I've managed to get them basically in the middle at the point where they're uh, not going to fall out unless you really uh, bash into it. So I'm sure that'll happen at some point. But anyway, I think that looks pretty good. Obviously, it's nowhere near as long as it should be. Um, there should be another level of struts. It's kind of cross section beneath the bridge before you actually get to the diagonals. But you know what? As I always say, I am going on selective compression, so I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. I've done some uh, rock work at the bottom, just trying to get the light to actually shine on it. Used a uh, 4x4 wedge plate there, and then a 3x3 curved plate here, just for some variety. And then everything is connected up at the top. I've put some different slopes and bits of plant life and coloured slopes and things like that. And uh, that'll blend in with the rest of the hillside when I actually go ahead and create that. So. I think we've really got to add this to the castle. It'll help make the uh, clock tower courtyard look a little bit less plain on that one end. And I'll also show you the change that I decided to make for the clock tower courtyard. That's looking really good in place. Obviously it looks a little bit strange because it's got a uh, bottom section and the rest of the castle really doesn't at the moment. But once this is all blended in, the rocks will kind of swoop down to meet that at the bottom and then come back up on the opposite side and I'll find a place for Hagrid's hut and all of this other stuff here. Um, yeah, quickly, the change that I've made is just to swap out, if I can get this to focus, that's a bit better. If I, uh, yeah, I swapped out the sticker with all the vines on it from the um, Hufflepuff Hogwarts Moment book, and I've changed that for just a more generic sticker, which actually came off uh, another set. In fact, it was the Clock Tower set. So I think that's a bit of an improvement and uh, doesn't stick out quite as much. I also removed the one by one um, sand green cones off the top of here just because I thought they looked a little bit too tall um, but there we are that is what it looks like with the bridge in place obviously when you come around here it does look a little bit odd because you can only see one side of it and you can see just how thin it is but uh, from the back here I think that's looking really really good it's just having a little bit of trouble focusing just because of the light levels in here but there we go, that is the Wooden Bridge, another fantastic addition to Hogwarts, something I've been looking forward to building for some time. Now, what I need to hear from you is, as I said at the beginning of the video, should I go ahead and swap some of the colours out? Like I said, I've got some dark brown windows I could use, some of the bricks also come in dark brown. These supports don't come in dark brown, unfortunately, so they've got to stay. I can also change some of the levels of the uh, roof slopes, maybe adding a plate below them to just lift them up or down. I can maybe add some slopes into the top of this bit here on the roof to make it go up and down as well. We'll just press that back into place. Um, yeah, so let me know if you think that's something I should do. Also, another thing I was toying with was finishing the roof off a little bit more smoothly here by adding uh, some sort of um, slopes or something like that at the end just to tie it into the courtyard a little bit better. Let me know if you think that would be something that's good or if it looks good as is. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed then please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment and let me know what you think and next time in the next Hogwarts update we will be adding on to the end of this the little um, sort of entrance building. I will find a proper name for it so I can name the video and uh, yeah and then after that we've got the Owlery, Bit of terrain, Forbidden Forest, Hagrid's Hut, find somewhere for the Quidditch pitch. I also did get my hands on the Hungarian Horntail, um, which may or may not be going in the Hogwarts display. Might be a little bit too big, but uh, I go back on what I said before. It's a fantastic model, and there may be a review of that coming in the future. So, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, have a good one.